We begin this news hour in Israel, where people have been voting for the fifth time in less than four years. Early figures suggest there's been an increase in turnouts with numbers not seen in 23 years. Opinion polls indicate this will be another tight race. Analysts say the biggest issue is whether people are for or against former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who's facing corruption charges. He'll need to break a long-standing deadlock in the Knesset and takes 61 seats to regain power. Israel's longest serving leader was forced from office a year ago by an ideologically diverse coalition drawn together by the current Prime Minister Yahya Lapid. But defections caused it to collapse, taking the country back to the polls. Go vote today for the future of our children, for the future of our country. Vote well. Mr. Lapid, while voters in Israel are understandably cautious about whether this election will unlock the political deadlock. It's terrible that the parties can't manage to form a coalition, to form a government that will work during four years. I'm doing my duty as a citizen, and I hope that these elections will be the last ones for the next four years. I'm afraid parties won't reach electoral tracehold, and there will be a right, fascist, extremist and radical bloc. That would be terrible for the country and its citizens. I think nothing will change, it'll be the same, exactly the same, and the smartest will form a government. This year, I voted for Itamar Ben Gvir, the last time I did too. I hope he will attract Netanyahu to the right, so that Netanyahu doesn't go with the centrists and leftists. I hope I'm not that happy to vote for the fifth time and uh, unfortunately I believe that we will go to the sixth as well. So this is why I vote for uh, Netanyahu, I vote Machal, uh, Machal and uh, I vote for Machal because I really want the right parties to be strong. Uh, even though I know that with, they will go only with the Orthodox but it's, I prefer it than Arabs in, uh, in uh, Israeli Knesset. And uh, that's it. I hope everyone will vote for the right uh, parties. Well, for more on these elections, let's speak to Arise Middle East analyst Dr. Saul Zadka, who's monitoring developments from London. Good to see you, Dr. Zadka. Just remind us why Israel is facing yet another election, its fifth general election in four years. Not only that, if uh, we believe the opinion polls, we may meet again in about six months time to discuss the outcome of election number six. The country is divided in the middle, the country is split as it was before, as it was during the four previous elections, and as normal, the confrontation and the stalemate is between the two blocs. The right wing that consists of the Likud party headed by Mr. Netanyahu, the extreme right, and the ultra-Orthodox on one side. And on the other, you have the center and the center to the left parties that are trying to preserve the current coalition government. So this kind of confrontation creates a deep division within the Israeli society. However, if there is an outcome that may point to a certain advantage to one of the two blocks, it could be the right wing headed by Mr. Netanyahu. And it's all about one or two seats in the Israeli parliament. It's quite extraordinary, really. And, and um, there is a different dynamic, uh, Dr. Zadka, that's been emerging in the polls over the last few weeks within Mr. Netanyahu's religious right wing bloc. And that is the ride, rise of the extremist ultra-nationalist far-right. I mean, tell us about that and how and why they are surging ahead. For some people, Mr. Netanyahu, who is facing three charges of corruption, is not radical enough. And it is to do with the fact that the Israelis are lurching all the time to the right. The new extreme right-wing party commands about 10% of the votes according to all the projections. 
and they are becoming increasingly more and more popular simply because of what is happening on the ground. In fact, the birth of extreme right wing in Israel did not happen in a vacuum. It started more than two decades ago with a wave of suicide bombing against Israelis, with the rise of Hamas group in Gaza, with what the Israelis see as a rejectionist Palestinian authority in the West Bank, with the riots that took place last year during the month of May in the mixed cities between Arabs and, and Jews, and also a string of terrorist attacks that took place in the West Bank and in Israel itself this year, in which 23 Israeli citizens were killed. All these events accumulated an understanding by many Israelis that the conflict with the Palestinians has no solution. Hence, the rise of the extreme right headed by this man that we are seeing on the screen at the moment. And uh, Dr. Zadka, I know you touched on this briefly earlier, but what about the block of Yair Lapid? Uh, I mean, he's the current prime minister who's been running the, the coalition. Um, what's his rating? Well, he proved himself to be a relatively reasonable prime minister in the last four months, during which he was the caretaker prime minister. And he can credit himself with certain amount of achievements, one of which was in uh, August, in which Israel managed to overpower the pro-Iranian Islamic Jihad that launched missiles from Gaza Strip into Israel. And he can also uh, point out to certain uh, achievements, uh, one of which is, of course, what happened uh, a week ago when Israel signed an agreement in which it shared the oil fields with Lebanon. However, Mr. Netanyahu waged a, a campaign that many of his rivals consider as a very dirty campaign in which he accused my, Mr. Lapid and his supporters of siding with terrorists. He even castigated the agreement with Lebanon and branding it as a victory for the Hezbollah, the pro-Iranian militia group in this country. In fact, it was Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, who also said that it was a victory for his organization. So ironically, Mr. Netanyahu and the leader of Hezbollah found themselves on the same side. So this kind of smear campaign against Mr. Lapid could be working today. Hence the assumption that it could be that Mr. Netanyahu would have the edge. Absolutely fascinating, especially the way that you tell it, uh, Dr. Zadka. So potentially, if we've got another tied, deadlocked election, we're going to be seeing lots of horse trading before we find out who's going to be running the country or whether or not they'll be going back to the polls. And, and what do ordinary Israelis make of all of this? I mean, do they relish the chance to be able to go to the polls again or not? Oh, not at all. They are simply fed up with uh, this kind of constant elections. And many of them also lost uh, trust in the democratic process. And if you consider the supporters of Mr. Lapid, they are also scaremongering about the likelihood of a Netanyahu's victory because they are saying that an, a coalition between the right wing, the ultra-Orthodox and the Likud party could make Israel a very isolated state in the Middle East. It could damage the Abraham Accords in which Israel normalized relations with Bahrain, the Emirates and Morocco three years ago. It could also jeopardize the peace treaties that Israel had for a few decades with Jordan and Egypt. It could make Israel the pariah of the Western world if the extreme right will take over domestically the extreme right even said that they are going to change the, the justice system in order to make it as a place in which the politician will choose the judges with the view of nullifying the trial in which Mr. Netanyahu is accused of corruption. Absolutely fascinating, a real model. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Dr. Zadka. Dr. Saul Zadka is a RISE Middle East analyst, and he was talking to me there about the latest Israeli elections.